what to expect at nursing school simulation. Before we dive into expectations, what is nursing school simulation lab? The cool kids call it sim lab. Simulation in nursing school is bridging the gap between skills lab and coursework. It brings these things into a lifelike healthcare setting. What it does is it takes you out of the textbooks, the lectures, and allows you to practice in more of a clinical setting and really gain that confidence to take all this knowledge and apply it. It even has patients. Well, they're not real patients, they're mannequins. But these mannequins are really, really real looking, but I'll dive more into that later. What simulation is not is simulation is not skills lab. Skills lab is where you simply practice nursing skills such as IV insertions, inserting catheters, vital signs, injections, and medication administration. But simulation is where you take these skills, you take your lectures, and you take all of this textbook knowledge that you have and apply it to a situation. Now, the reason nursing schools do simulation is to provide a safe environment for students like you to apply your knowledge in a safe place where mistakes are okay. And trust me, mistakes will be made. I've had my fair share of them in SimLab. If you were to take one thing from this video, it would be to come prepared to these sim labs. If your school sends you articles or chapters to review before sim lab, be sure to take these seriously. If you skip this part, first of all, you won't be making the most out of your learning experience, which you paid a lot of money for. And you can usually tell really quickly who read the material and who didn't. So to save yourself some embarrassment, please show up to these sim labs prepared. Complete the assigned readings, review the articles, review the coursework, and research the patient condition beforehand if you know it. All right, let's walk through an example so you know exactly what to expect. Typically, you and one or two other students will be chosen for a specific scenario. You'll walk into the room and read the scenario given to you. This will contain patients' medical history, medications, allergies, and really anything else important that you need to know about your patient. So depending on what rotation or class you're in that semester, maybe mother baby, gerontology, med surge, pediatrics, the task might be to give morning meds, take the vital signs, um, maybe prepare the patient for surgery, or it might escalate into an emergency situation like cardiac arrest. But again, other times it's simply just caring for your patient's daily needs. If you're in mother baby rotation, it could be prepping the mom to give birth or postpartum care like postpartum hemorrhage, or it could be more of an ICU setting where you need to care for a trach or mechanical ventilation, or again, cardiac arrest. In real life, you don't always know what you're walking into because we're dealing with real patients, real humans, real families with real conditions. Again, simulation is simulating that because we don't always know what we're walking into. The scariest part about this, in my opinion, is that your cohort and your professors are watching you in this scenario from another room. And usually you can't see them, they can only see you. When you are in a situation like this, it can be so easy to freeze up and get really nervous because you are so anxious. So here are some tips for walking through these scenarios next time you're at SimLab. The first tip is to relax and take deep breaths. What's the worst that can happen? You kill your fake patient? At least in my school, you didn't fail if you killed the patient or even made a mistake. That's literally why you are in sim lab. You'd much, much rather mess up there than in real world. Okay, next tip is that if you don't know where to start or what to do with your patient, use the nursing process. Yep, that thing you thought you'd never use in real life, use that. Assess diagnose, plan, implement, and evaluate. Now it won't be this formal because you're in a situation with a real patient, but it can be really, really helpful when you have a million people watching you from another room to walk through these steps. So let's walk through it. First, you're going to assess your patient. Let's say you assess your patient and you realize that their oxygen saturation is really low. Maybe they're using their accessory muscles to breathe. Okay, now we go to our diagnosis. Think about what nursing diagnosis could this be? In simple terms, they're having trouble breathing. Now for the plan. So you think about what the plan is. Basically, what can we do to help this patient with their breathing? Now we implement. What are some things that you can do to help this patient? Well, we could increase the head of the bed, uh, monitor the vital signs to see if that helped, Maybe we can suction secretions out of their mouth and administer oxygen. Again, we're thinking of how this patient is presenting 
and what interventions you can take to help the patient. Then you can evaluate if what you did worked and helped the patient breathe easier. So you can ask your patient, are you still having trouble breathing? Um, you can say, you know, does the patient visibly look like they're breathing easier? You can listen to their lung sounds to see if they sound a little better than they did before. See, not so bad when you follow the nursing process. Now, how can you prioritize what you actually need to do first? For this, we use the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. So maybe it's an emergent situation where you're not gonna go through the whole nursing process. Again, you can use the ABCs and you will intervene based on those first. So first, you're gonna fix the airway problem if there is one then you'll fix the breathing problem and so forth. Next tip is to communicate with your team. There are other nurses in the room with you. So talk out loud with what you're thinking, work together, use each other's skills. Odds are when you work together, you're less likely to kind of like miss or forget those obvious things. So communicate, communicate and work together. Next tip is if you are ever unsure what to do in SimLab, just start assessing your patient. Assess their vital signs, ask them questions, and be a detective. You're looking for something that's possibly wrong in your patient. So when in doubt, assess. Now let's talk about the mannequins. If you don't already know, these mannequins talk. Well, they don't actually talk. Typically, your professor is in a control room and they have a microphone and are talking on behalf of the mannequin. The first simulation will always be a little awkward, but Talking to the mannequin is definitely a huge learning curve and it might take you a little bit of time to get used to, but don't worry, you're not alone in feeling like that. They also do way more than talk. Their chest rises, they have vital signs, heartbeats, blood pressures, and you can even hear their lung sounds. Again, we're trying to simulate a real patient in a real hospital. One of the best parts about simulation is the debriefing at the end. Debriefing is where you, your classmates, and your professors come together and you talk about what went well, what could have been better for next time, and what are some things that you would have done differently. Sometimes it can be so frustrating realizing that you forgot something to do that looking back you knew you should have done, but you just forgot about it in the heat of the moment. But making mistakes is part of this learning and odds are you'll probably never make that mistake again. Simulation really does help you learn and, and make those mistakes in a safe environment where they really are okay. Just a reminder that every single person was a new newbie at some point. Even the most seasoned nurse on the floor, they were a newbie at some point. So remember to enjoy the journey, learn from your mistakes, allow them to make you stronger. You got this future nurses.